number one tip is go to your local pool, experience what it's like, experience what swimming can do for you, and then you will become an incredible advocate for the patient. When I first met Darren, he was struggling to keep at even a gentle pace. He was getting quite breathless. That was a combination of, of course, his baseline fitness, but also the fact that he was recently out of hospital, suffering with a respiratory infection with COVID. At the end of February 21, I ended up in intensive care for 45 days, put me in an induced coma for um, 15 days, and then following discharge, I had two readmissions from various infections. Immediately in post-recovery, I had uh, real problems with, with my leg function. I also had uh, uh, breathing issues, I was very short of breath, and then to try and address that, I, I started swimming. Being able to see Darren swim in the flesh, it's not something that most healthcare professionals will ever get the privilege of doing, because as he continued to swim, you could see visibly how different he was. He was fitter, he looked younger, he looked stronger, and also more confident as well. You know, swimming is, is, is good all round exercise. So if a doctor's telling you to do something, that's got huge value. And I'm sure most medical professionals would say fitness is something people need to do, but you need to be reminded to do it and you need to be keep, keep being reminded to do it. I think it's important that we have that in the back of our mind when we are signposting patients to access the water. For many, swimming can be a really good gateway activity. Encouraging them and supporting them on that journey can be far more powerful than a number of the other interventions that we do.